Hello everyone. So let us uh, continue our discussion uh, from the last class today. We will look into what is meant by workspace and what are the um, uh, recommendations needed for different uh, activities. So first we will look into what is meant by a workspace or a work envelope etc. So a workspace envelope is nothing but a three-dimensional space within which an individual works. So it is a three a workspace envelope is a three-dimensional concept. So essentially, a, in simple uh, terms or in generally, we can say that this is a space within which the hands are used. So if you are an operator working in a uh, working in a control room, uh, the area through which your hand swipes or the area which your hands covers is generally your workspace or workspace envelope. Now in considering this uh, workspace or workspace envelope, there are two important definitions in this topic. One is out of reach requirements and the other one is clearance requirements. First let us uh, see what is out of reach requirements. This will be discussed in detail later. So as definition, it is the distance required to prevent a person from reaching something, usually a hazardous, over a barrier. So to understand this uh, uh, definition better, uh, the best example I can quote is that uh, of a zoo. In, For example, at the zoo, how far beyond a guard rail should the hawk cage be placed to ensure people cannot put their fingers in the cage? So you might have seen that uh, if you have visited a zoo, the cage where animals are put and uh, the barrier through which the um, visitors go, there is a dis distance in between these two. That is the distance between the barrier which is put and the cage which in which the animals are put. This is to ensure that people do not put their hands or fingers inside uh, so that it can pose uh, danger to the danger to the people so this distance that is the distance between that guardrail fixing and that of the cage is out of reach requirements and the second definition is clearance requirements which is simple that is the minimum space needed to move through a tight space or to perform in a confined area so sometimes we know that uh, there are workers who need to work in confined area confined spaces like firefighters or uh, uh, escape paths, etc. So in that uh, cases, what is the minimum area that should be provided so that they can work inside that? For example, it can be a mining work or a drilling work or a, a, or a manhole uh, area. So what is the minimum space that is required so that the workers can uh, perform their work inside that area? That is known as clearance requirements. Now, uh, in this topic, we will be discussing the concept of workspace envelope in two main uh, dimensions. One is the workspace envelope for a seated personnel, and obviously the other one will be for the standing personnel. So first, we will discuss the, that of uh, workspace envelope for seated personnel. So uh, a person who is sitting and doing the job, uh, usually his workspace is determined by the functional arm reach or the effective area through which his hands swipes. So this uh, area or this distance will be in turn influenced by the direction of their arm reach. One. Second one is the nature of the manual activity. That is uh, what kind of uh, task he is doing and the presence of any restraints or the apparels one. That is in some cases if you are having a, a, a thicker cloth, a heavier cloth that can also restrain you from reaching uh, the distance that uh, you would have op optimally be reached. So these three are the factors uh, which affect the functional arm reach uh, of a seated personnel. Now we'll look into each of these three categories in detail. First one is effective direction of uh, reach and the presence of restraints. So given is a figure in which uh, you have 
the functional arm reach for fifth percentile of male and females at specified levels above a seat reference point so fifth percentile 50th percentile and 95 percentile you have already you already know because i have discussed it in the last lecture and uh, these uh, what are these these are anthropometric constraints and i have quoted examples and uh, explained that so hope you all uh, are clear with that so these are the functional arm reach for fifth percentile of male and female the left one is for males and the right one right figure is for females above a seat reference point this is commonly referred to as srp seat reference point so this is the place where you are sitting this center position is the seating position and the three dimensional space is represented by this data can be considered as forming a workspace envelope that would up accommodate 95 percent of the population so in this both these figures you can clearly uh, see the reference lines that is this this first circle showing 25 centimeter or 10 inch the second concentric circle is at 51 centimeter and the third one is at 76 centimeters so that is for your reference and uh, these are uh, the experiments or the observations were conduct conducted under two conditions one is restrained and other one is unrestrained condition now what is meant by restrained conditions restrained means the shoulders of the subjects or the persons were held back against the seat that is uh, the their hands were uh, restrained to move freely uh, that is they were held back whereas in the case of unstrained conditions uh, the workers or the subjects could move their shoulders and also you should consider that the um, uh, the workers or the subjects that were uh, uh, that were selected uh, so that they were like, they gave a good reasonable reasonably good representation of the adults in terms of their height and weight so this uh, figure will represent uh, that of its general population so the area traced by each of these persons that is it can be male or female is represented here and two levels are fixed in each cases first one is the in the restraint level 90 centimeter and second one is between 40 to 60 centimeter same is the case with unstrained condition also and the following observations are made and uh, uh, the observations were on the basis of the data of the either sex one could envision a three dimensional space outer surface of which would include values represented by data in the figure such a three dimensional space a workspace envelope would then represent limits of convenient arm reach for fifth percentile of the population but such limits would of course accommodate 95 percent of the population so even though it is uh, this uh, that figure is drawn for fifth percentile population it was found that it could accommodate 95 percent of the total population now coming to the second uh, point that is the effect of manual activity so in this uh, point it is uh, investigated how does the manual activity any manual activity affect the person's reach or uh, or a person's uh, workspace envelope for example if a person uh, if, a, if a seated person is uh, is supposed to activate just a knob or a button uh, it is it is uh, enough uh, to uh, use fingertip measurement uh, to find out the arm reach but for uh, but uh, if he is doing some other activity some other manual activity and along that he has to do a certain uh, function then how does it affect so in that case there are two important definitions that is very uh, that is to be looked upon first one is kinetosphere kinetosphere is nothing but it shows a mean contours contours means the images or the tracings as a photograph from three different angles these three angles can be top or transverse frontal or coronal and uh, side or sagittal uh, so uh, recall that you have already seen the three images of a uh, fork truck driver uh, that was discussed in the uh, previous video so that sort of an a tracing is known as kinetosphere here uh, grips are not considered that is a type of grip uh, the operator is uh, using or uh, is handling is not considered whereas in the case of second definition that is troposphere 
the shaded areas define the region that is common to the hand motions made with various hand grips so here various hand grips are also considered and then the hand motions are also uh, uh, also taken into consideration now here is a figure uh, which shows uh, the troposphere resulting from superimposition of the gynotosphere of range of hand movements with a number of hand grabs position in three dimensional space so you can uh, you can see that two images are superimposed here and the shaded areas define the region that is common to the hand motions made with the various hand grips so the uh, three dimension space in the workspace envelope within which various types of hand grips could most adequately be executed is shown in the uh, shown by the uh, shaded area to the third point that it is effective app apparel apparel or the dresses that you wear so obviously if you are wearing uh, some uh, heavy uh, heavy apparels or heavy dresses they will restrict, uh, restrict the workers movement and their reach distances so uh, this uh, in a survey of truck and bus drivers sanders uh, that is the ergonomists found out that uh, winter jackets uh, worn by these drivers restricted their reach by two inches approximately or five centimeters so that is the effect of apparel now we come to the next uh, category that is workspace envelope for standing personnel now here is a, a here is a task for you to find out uh, or better understand the standing personnel uh, workspace envelope for standing personnel so it says uh, uh, to stand your uh, stand with your back and heel against a wall and reach forward as far as you can so you will be obviously be restricted by the center of gravity and uh, uh, try to uh, repeat the same experiment with uh, you moving away from the wall so you can uh, read this by yourselves and uh, uh, examine the changes that you can it is a uh, it is an experiment or rather a task for you so this is the figure showing zone of convenient reach for fifth person day uh, standing female no bending at the waist is required for a full grip at the reach point is assumed so this figure uh, is looking like a two ice cream cones which are joined together at the top So that uh, figure represents the standing zone of convenient reach for the fifth percentile female as a function of the distances in front of the shoulders. So these all these figures are drawn as per various experiments conducted on different uh, category of people. This zone requires no forward bending at the waist to points with the space and assumes full grip at the reach points. And as I have mentioned earlier, it looks like two ice cream cones joined together at the top. Now, in, into the details of out of reach requirements, uh, so in many situations, objects are not to be touched, must be placed uh, near the people where people work or play. So, best examples are that of a museum or robots in a factory. Uh, you might have seen the board that uh, look but do not touch uh, those objects. In such situation, usually a barrier of some height is placed between the person and the objects. So as an ergonomist or as an human factors engineer, our question or our challenge issue uh, is that how far should the barrier be placed from the person who is looking so that people cannot touch it. And uh, people should not be able to touch it, but also people should also get a good view of the things that is displayed. So that is the uh, constraints here. How far it, uh, the barrier should be placed so that uh, the exhibits are clearly visible and also exhibits cannot be touched by the uh, by the people who, who are the visitors so this answer depends on the height of the barrier and the height of the object now given is a figure uh, which clearly de uh, depicts the uh, uh, importance of out of reach requirements so here is a person in the figure a there is a person who is uh, uh, who is leaning uh, to touch a an object the first figure that is a figure it is for uh, uh, it is the representation of uh, reach conditions 
for the extreme and then d is for the some some kind of extension now clearance requirements people sometimes have to work in or move through even just fit into some restricted or awkward spaces this is especially true for some types of maintenance works uh, in most cases heavy clothing adds 4 to 6 inches that is 10 to 15 centimeters to the requirements and in case of escape hatches 10 inch or 25 centimeters so below is given um, uh, the dimensions for sleeper berths design of sleeper berths preferred position prostrate positions and legal specifications uh, both the length and width and the uh, value in the bracket is for inches and the other one is in meters so here is a figure showing the different uh, clearance requirements uh, for certain uh, works uh, that individuals may be required to work in or uh, pass through different situations etc so uh, if you clearly observe this uh, each of these figures uh, there are two category of values are given one is in inches and the same value is in uh, in centimeters is given on the right side so the left one is in inches and the other one is in centimeters and also in each of these uh, two categories another three values are given so what does they mean so these three uh, values means nothing but one is with the mm, minimum clothing uh, or the uh, uh, or the minimum amount of uh, obstructions and the second value is the best best value or the average value that is the best uh, with the normal clothing and the third one that is the bottom value is with heavy clothing uh, that is some kind of jackets or winter jackets as we have men uh, just seen earlier so these three are the clothing conditions values are given these three values